Strasvutya moya zhruzhya. Welcome to Good Society. Um, so a year ago, I had this interesting idea, which was, why don't I try and do Good Society, except use Tolstoy instead of Austin? Because Good Society is an Austinian uh, role-playing game. And so I invited these fine people to play in that game. And uh, it was, um, uh, in all sincerity, one of the most uh, incredible role-playing experiences in my life. So I've decided to try and catch lightning in a bottle again uh, by inviting everybody back to do another round of Tolstoy, except uh, since last time we did the easy level of using uh, the biggest soap opera in the world, War and Peace, which really is, folks, if you've never read it, it's a soap opera that Napoleon shows up in two-thirds of the way through. Um, today we're going to do Anna Karenina or at least something along that lines, uh, which is, you know, only possibly the greatest novel written in Europe in the last 150 years. So no pressure. Uh, I have a wonderful cast. Uh, as I've said, I invited them all back specifically for this. But why don't we start tonight with uh, my dear friend, longtime co-collaborator, creator of so many things in this uh, world together with me, uh, Serafina, who is playing... Uh, Oh, who are we? Oh, yes. Baroness Tamara Konstantinova Yashvina. Also known as Toma. Um, so I'm Serafina, she, her. Toma is also she, her. But, you know, we'll see how much she sticks to the traditional gender roles. Um, <clears throat> she is a widowed and the daughter of Kat's character, um, who we will learn a little bit about later. Um, and she has returned to Russia after many years in England following her husband's untimely death in a duel. Uh, because because you were sleeping with the other guy, right? Totally, yeah, not his wife. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, so why don't we go next to go to uh, another dear friend of mine, uh, Richard, who is playing, uh, who are we now today? Baron Grigory Antonovich Zinoviev. Also known as Grisha. Uh, Grisha is the uh, the uh, half brother uh, and godparent of another character who will soon be introduced, but uh, has been a, a socialite in Saint Saint Petersburg, uh, living on uh, business decisions from his late father's unexpectedly limited fortune uh, since he uh, came of age, and. Uh, has discovered the limits of it recently and uh, discovered that it was an inopportune financial moment for himself and is now sort of flailing about to figure out how he's going to fund the rest of his adulthood. Well, I mean, you can marry for money. It's, a, it's you know, it's, it's a way to go. It's a standard way. Um, so uh, why don't we go to uh, Daryl, the Machiavellian creator of the amazing final uh, sequence of the last game, uh, who is playing another um, gentle soul with no darker side, Prince Valentin Stepanich Volokhov. Well, his mother calls him Volya, um, and that's pretty much because he has no other friends. Uh, that's because Valentin is a, a gentle and shy man who has yet to marry, though not for lack of opportunity. Uh, his family is particularly pious, and they have yet to find a girl good enough for him, and he's kind of fine with that. Uh, no, definitely no foreshadowing there. Um, he assumes that he will eventually marry and settle into a dull life, but secretly wonders if there could be something more. Also, he's loaded, but not just yet because he's the heir so his mother is loaded but someday he'll be loaded i mean my character's already loaded so um yeah okay we're so we're gonna do this again sure um, guys turns out russia is queer as fuck uh why don't we move on to uh leandro uh, another dear member of uh, the former Kingsport Drama Society who is playing uh, the Countess Alexandra, Alexandra Fyodorovna Kuznetsova. Yeah. Uh, well, I, I mean, Andrew used to say he and pronouns uh, Countess Alexandra or Shura to people who know her best. Uh, I used to share pronouns. Uh, she is... <laughs> um, 
Yeah, she's basically um, kind of like the product of her mother's um, second marriage. Um, uh, as mentioned, the, the aforementioned uh, Grisha's uh, half sibling, uh, the godchild of. Uh, basically, she was kind of like uh, her mother's redemption after after having had to have a second marriage. And so throughout her life, kind of wrapped herself up in the bunting of good graces and exemplary virtues and finally reached her goal of like basically, yeah, I'm a make good. So I'm, I, mar I married good. That That's what I did. Um, uh, married to a war hero uh, named Count Viktor Kuznetsov, um, and yeah, no, it worked out well. It worked out well. What she didn't realize, what she sure didn't realize, that life goes on after that, and it, it didn't turn. Well, it turned out. Ugh. It's 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 all, it's all just one big like flat plane, and and I guess at the moment she doesn't see, and all she's seeing is walking that plane. No ups and downs, just forward. That's it. That's that's all that's gonna happen. Not, nothing dramatic whatsoever. Remember, you did ask for this. And uh, I am playing uh, Konstantin Sergeyevich Katavasov. Uh, and yes, folks, uh, this time I'm going to try and do slightly better on the Russian pronunciation. Uh, I even included the little Russian pronunciation guide for my players but uh if we don't i apologize to uh to uh Levy, lev nikolaevich Tolstoy, and just about everybody else in the russophone world uh so kostya who also goes by the english nickname connie because believe it or not that was a 19th century russia thing uh is a writer of comic farces for the most part uh he has been abroad for many many years uh knocking them dead at the comedy at the comedy francaise and uh on the stage in london and wherever else he can sell his farce and uh joyous uh love of life plays uh he is the estranged father of tomara konstantinova um probably because he forced her into a loveless marriage and the rumor goes because of money there were certainly no other reasons why he would try and save her reputation especially given that he doesn't have one uh constantine is a uh, lover of life but he is a little bit dissipated and a gambler and likes to drink and have a good time uh in playbook terms uh if you're following along with uh good society at home he is the hedonist he is returning to Russia after many years abroad. Um, totally not because he may be running out of money. That is a vile rumor that has no truth whatsoever. Um, so uh, one of the fun things about Good Society is we also get to play uh, the connections of the main characters whose job it is to uh, make things difficult for the main characters or complicate their lives in other ways. Uh, we've only chosen to make one connection now. We're gonna see how that goes and we'll fill them in as we go along. Uh, but while we start, uh, Serafina, you're playing Princess Daria Yuryevna Volhova, who is related to Valentin, uh, is Valentin's mother, huh? Valentine's overbearing mother. Um, and really what I think Daria wants is if, <laughs> I love the description, if one were to look at the princess Daria and wonder if ugly, ugliness were a sign of piety, then one would never doubt that the princess was the most pious of all. Thank you, Daryl. Um, <laughs> so I think that really what Daria wants is for Valentine to marry a woman just like her. And she will do anything to make that happen. Oh, dear God. I know. Fortunately, I may have someone for you. Don't worry, princess. Um, why don't we next go to Richard, who's playing Ludmila Vladimirovna Kovalyova, uh, who is Toma's spurned lover. So Ludmilla is uh, formerly in boarding school with uh, an older woman named Toma, who she loved quite desperately, 
and uh, believed was her protector. Um, and then I, you know, she had several different fantasies of how this would play out and none of them came true because Toma was married off to someone else. Uh, and, uh, but she's heard rumors that Toma may yet again be available. Um, for ter and, certain tightly restricted forms of available. Look, the heart that loves looks for all possibilities. It's called a Boston marriage, okay? Not in Russia, it's not. I don't know what they call it in Russia. Maybe it's it was a Petersburg really fling. Okay, well, I mean, I'm not, no joke. There's actually a thing about the uh, air, the salt air in Petersburg being good for your complexion. It is mentioned in Anna Karenina. Ran today, that's right, folks. This is going to be Today I Learned with Kat. <laughs> well, we go to uh, Daryl. It will stop me from babbling. I uh, was playing Countess Lilia Vitalievna Efimova, who is uh, Grisha and Shura's eccentric mother. Well, yes, uh, you see, Liliana married once for love, and um, he was a very good man. And uh, I do have a, a son from him that I, I very much care for. But yeah, then he passed away, and uh, there was still so much more to do. So I married again, and I had my beautiful Shura, who is the light of my life and who has made me so happy. And also, my son is doing things that he's going to do. So that's great. Um, <laughs> But I do believe that they will be so successful in everything they do, but especially Shura, who has gotten everything right that I got wrong. <laughs> you're, you're, you're a lovely lady, and uh, I, I look forward to attending your, your balls with the free food. Uh, so uh, let's go to Leandro, who is playing Anna Sergeyevna, Kata, Katavasova, uh, who is uh, Konstantin's youngest sister. Yeah, oh, I just realized her name is Anna. Oh, oh gosh. Um, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, Anna is uh, is Connie's youngest sister, the, the baby of the Katavasova family, so to speak. Um, she's not yet married. She's hoping to make a good match, but there's been no success in that front, and there's no no one's telling her to to do it, but except for herself, uh, I guess. So if there's any metaphorical clocks ticking, it's all probably well either in her head or in society's head, I suppose. So she needs all the help she can get. Surely the the libertine of the Katatvazova family could help her out. You know, surely Connie would have some pearls of wisdom. Uh, to throw her away. I mean, he he he's got his life sorted, right? Right. I mean, yes. I mean, you know, if he if 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 living in a in a French chateau most of the year counts as making it, I suppose. Hey, we didn't actually talk about this. Um, so there may be a connection we'll need to create later. Uh, perhaps uh, Svetlana, sorry, uh, Constantine and uh, Anna's mother. We'll see. I'm assuming you're probably not staying with the parents, though. Maybe you're staying with a, a friend of the family or something. Uh, and finally, uh, I, Kat, am playing Count Viktor Filipovich uh, Kuznetsov, uh, who is the Countess's husband. He is uh, a strong man. In a, in this description is too good not to read a glacier of a man encased in memories of glory's past uh he is a war hero which given the time means he probably was fighting in afghanistan fantastic <laughs> um and uh shura is my beautiful intelligent wife uh and uh she uh knows her duties as a society wife extremely well and uh, so long as she fulfills all of them, then we will be content and have a happy marriage. Um, that, of course, will never be threatened because she is good and pure. Okay. 
Ah, uh, so uh, Good Society is played in a number of phases. Uh, there are a bunch, and they constitute a cycle. The short answer is uh, we basically play two of each kind until uh, we're done, and then that's a cycle. If we can at all today, I would love to get in two novel chapters before we're out. And so, I know, stop me if you've heard this before, but what I was thinking is, what if we did visitations in the beginning and maybe to the point of not um maybe not everybody needs to call a scene you can just do the visitations and then uh i'm thinking some kind of ball to bring all the characters together in the second novel chapter that work okay so um so Russia in the 19th century, as Russia is today, uh, has two major cities, St. Petersburg, which uh, was the imperial capital and the European capital, and Moscow, which was the Asian and ancient capital. So uh, where does everybody live? Are we Petersburgers? Or are we Muscovites? I think Petersburg. I think we're, we're very Petersburg-y in the, in the right. descriptions right now. Yeah. If I were to call a scene, I might want to see uh, the Baroness uh, showing up at the Petersburg train station to meet her father, who cabled her from Paris, saying that he would be arriving soon, uh, oh, cool. and looks forward to seeing her once again and to catch up. It's because it has been many years. What's his least favorite color? On a woman? Yeah. Black, because that would mean she would be that that raises the possibility she's unavailable. Okay, but not black, because she wouldn't be in formal mourning even if it is to make fun of him. Oh, then red. Okay, great. <laughs> Remember if his family's showing up wearing, you know, bright red, it's gonna bug yeah. him, really. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as he steps off of the train and like, you know, you see that sort of a like classic steam moving away from the train track sort of thing. Um, and it reveals Toma in head to toe, blood red, um, a gown that she had specifically made for the occasion. She doesn't often allow herself such fripperies, but worth it. Excellent. Uh, he gets off the train with a couple of guys. He's slapping their backs like, Sergei Antonovich, I will see you tomorrow at the club. It was such a wonderful... I, I wish to hear more stories about the many times you drilled on the Husser battlefield. Thank you. Thank you, men. Thank you both. And he uh, whips his cane around in a very nonchalant air and taps along. Uh, he's you know wearing an overcoat, but he's got a silk top hat on and a beautifully embroidered silk waistcoat. And he comes up and gives you the extravagant Russian kisses. And says, ah, Tabby, my dearest daughter, I am so happy to see you. Why, well, you look, you look, um, you look quite the part. Uh, uh, well, I knew. well, I, uh, I am glad to see that you can still afford Madame Chambord. Well, you know me, never wanted to waste a penny. To be honest, I have expected you to show up in a riding habit or perhaps the uniform of a colonel of the hussars. She like links arms with you and says, my dearest father, things are not so bad yet that I feel I need to shock you straight into the grave. That is good news. That is good news. I've suffered many shocks over the past year. Things are difficult. Paris was taken over by a bunch of crazy socialists. It's been a strange year. Yes, I did hear something about that. Oh, well. much calmer. I tried writing a play about it, but it's very difficult to make that funny. So I don't know why one would even attempt to make something like that funny. Weren't people killed? No, you people are killed all the time. Comedy can be expanded to make to be about any subject, dear Tabby. It's just uh, this one was a little too difficult, but it's 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 fine. As a matter of fact, uh, while I still do very well in the royalties of the plays, uh, did you know that they're now performing them in the United States? It's astonishing. Oh, I, really? 
I sincerely hope that I get some part of the royalties because I'm not sure what you know that the Americans are just the worst copyright pirates in the world. That is something that I have heard. Yes. Are they happening on the New York stage? I, I don't think so much as New York. Um, I don't know. They have many cities there, don't they? They do indeed. I understand that New York is the place to be. Yes, this does Providence sound like a place? It's a French name, I guess. Do you, I believe you mean Providence. Ah, yes, yes, yes. I mean, I'm sure if they have a French name like that, they must be an exceptionally cultured city. Um, yes, of course. But, but as a matter of fact, I am uh, currently working on a completely different strain of, of work. Interesting. They make their way out and they're like the place where all the carriages are sort of like waiting for people to be picked up and she just begins to walk towards her house. Did you uh, did you not take a cab or uh, I would have thought you would have had your carriage bring you? Oh, father, I did not need a carriage for this. And besides, you haven't been in Petersburg in so long. I thought you might like to see the city from your feet. Well, of course, it's just, you know, somewhat there's a certain nip in the air, my beloved Dabby. Is it not cold in France? Mm, depends on the part of France you're in. If you're in the south of France, it's quite lovely most of the year. Mm, I see our time apart has benefited me far more than you. In England, it is quite bitter around this time of year. Ah, yes. You know, I was in London, but I respected your privacy during your mourning phase. Mm, appreciate it. But I am writing, Tabby, believe it or not, a historical <clears throat> romance. It's set during the Great Patriotic War. The, during the, it it culminate, culminates in the events of the year 12. Fascinating. It, Is that what brought it, you back to Russia? Yes, a certain amount of research is necessary. I hope to perhaps look at some of my grandmother's writings. Uh, she had the most scandalous friends back in that day. I think, um, does she live in the family house tomorrow now that she's- Oh, I think you'd be living in your, I don't know, did you your husband's house? I think I gave up my husband's house and moved back into the family seat. So maybe you just have apartments. I don't think I kept that house. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think, um, but she has a lot of the family stuff. Yeah. Yeah, um, which is more what I was thinking. Um, well, of course I can give you access to them. Most of them are in the library at home. Yes, yes, I, I do look forward. You know, some of some of the events that she dealt with are far too scandalous. But I'll just reverse the gender of a lot of the names, and it'll work just fine. It is quite a shame that only men are able to have those sorts of adventures in your stories. Well, I mean, that all depends. I mean, certainly the uh, the. The comic character who uh, is a confirmed bachelor is a long-standing staple of the comic theater. I mean, no comment on anything. I myself am a mostly committed bachelor these days. Yes, I've heard. Well, why don't we dine out tonight? I'm sure that there's some appropriate restaurant for us to go to. I, 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 I'm very happy to see you again, Tabby. Mm. I don't know. I actually think it might be nice to call the scene there. Yeah, I think so too. Yeah. yeah. Okay, great. All right, step up to the step up to the line, folks. <laughs> uh, so I think it would be nice if Valentine um, goes to visit Alexandra, uh, perhaps because I'm friend like we were acquainted at some point uh and i'm actually visiting in from moscow because that's where our family seat is okay okay um i think uh yeah i think we, we can just kind of like cut to like them having tea you don't have to do like yeah introduction with that I, yeah i think they definitely would be acquainted um probably uh I'm trying to imagine how long would Alexandra have been married? Sorry, I'm getting hung up over a random detail. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, you say your family uh, seat is in Moscow. So, what are you saying? Oh, I guess I'll just actually I'll just ask this in character. 
Um, so we're having tea at our place. I could visit you, or you could have visited me in the hotel that I was staying in. Ooh. Um, yeah, I think I think I'm more interested in the latter because that feels like actually. So I'm overthinking things. I've had too but much coffee tonight. Perhaps it's like um, I had offered to call in on you, but you were like you, the idea of like getting out of the house was much more exciting than uh, yeah than having to serve you know like host. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like my my first thought was like, is it too early to do that? It's like, no, no, let's just let's just go ahead, you know. It's like this, this let's just do the drama. It's like a train, you know. We just we just go. Um, yeah. So, what do your hotel rooms look like? They look okay. Is your fa your family not hurting? Is that, no, we're definitely like having like tea and like the big like dining area or something like that. And so it's all like you know like crystals and like footmen and everything to just make it like extra like extravagant um and it's it's really like very obvious that like i don't notice like all of the finery at all i'm just there sitting like kind of like just you know like very casually and i ask um my it's been it's been how many years since it's been since you've been married two has it been two years already i swear i only saw you last season and yet here we are so much older yes uh, a lot can happen in two years, I suppose. How's your mother doing? Oh, same as always, you know, constantly praying for the day that I'll get married. Um, you should have seen the the girl that she had uh, come come by for uh, the, the hunt last fall. Uh, it was not, uh, she, she was entirely unsuitable. <laughs> well, I suppose, well, I do wish you good luck in finding a spouse that would be suitable. I'm sure Russia is such a large country. I'm sure there's someone there who would be well suited to you. I, I'm sure I, I believe you are wishing me well, but I think that your your kindness is actually much more of a threat. <laughs> you know that I much prefer my studies. <laughs> Oh, I, I know that very well. Uh, uh, will be friends enough for me to call you Valia? Yes. yes. Yeah. Oh, I know that well, Valia, but society will insist at some point. And there, there is such a thing as tr trying to save yourself for high standards, but you'll ne you will never know, really, unless... You would not want to leave this up to the last minute, you know? Oh, I mean, believe me, if if my mother has anything to say about it, I will be married on the morrow. Uh, it is my sole purpose in life to dissuade her from tying me down to what are, quite honestly, some of the least interesting people I have ever met. <laughs> well, have you yourself made any effort to find interesting people? What effort is there? There's only interesting conversation at the clubs, and I can very hardly look for a wife there. <laughs> well, well, if you'll not find them in your clubs, and perhaps I might find someone who might suit your standards, if you will not mind me, if you will not mind my help in that matter. Well. Well, sure, you are very highly spoken of by my mother. So I think that if she came with your recommendation, that would possibly stand muster with her. True, but uh, yeah, I need not have to listen to your mother about what she believes to be suited to you. I need only listen to listen to you. Uh, if only I could not listen to my mother about what she finds suitable for me. <laughs> <laughs> then, then you need not listen at all. Leave all that to me. And yes, but I, enough I'm about sure. me, Shora. How has marriage treated you? Oh, um, I think Shora is she's practiced at this. She she puts on her like her most graceful airs, uh, so to speak, and says, "Oh, marriage has been everything I expected it to be." It's... I would like to use a resolve token, and I would like you to you like say one of your obvious tells about like that you're lying, like a, a thing that you do when you're lying, and that I would know that you do when you're lying, but no one 
and you're like your like married family knows um yeah uh, yeah you would notice uh she blinks a lot when she and she's like massaging the truth and and the and you know I, i'll give you two tells one she blinks a lot and uh, and according to that she kind of like looks away for like a moment then it's like it's a split second you can tell she's like constructing what she's going to say and she says oh yeah marriage has been exactly what i expected to be uh count uh I the pronunciation kuznetsov is is as is as what i expected he is a man of great stature of poise and dignity and i could not be happier i like sit there for a second and hear you say that and then i see you look away and i say my dear it doesn't do to look so intensely upon these new electric lights they've installed they're making you blink like nothing like as if you're staring into the sun <laughs> literally yeah. just calling you out on it <laughs> yeah well for, for, forgive me for being quite fascinated with what the oncoming century will wreak upon us and, and she takes a sip to like calm of uh, tea because obviously it's tea and to like calm herself and and, and she's like be that as it may, two years has been quite enough to to comfort me that I've made I've made the choice that's well suited for myself, Valya. He kind of just like looks he, he looks perceptively at you, like and just kind of sees like you're I, I feel like we're probably like a bit closer than just acquaintances or anything like that like maybe mm. we were almost ch like childhood friends or something uh, mm. and then he just kind of like takes a sip of his own tea and says quite well um mother is having another ball in the next season and i would love it if you would bring your dear husband and stay with us Oh, I'm sure he'd be delighted to attend, and I would be too. And who knows? Perhaps I can, I can help with your situation, so to speak, with your mother during oh, that event. There is no speaking to her unless you're going to be speaking from the good book itself. Well, I'll do my best, my best to brush up. I think uh, she kind of. There's, there's a there's a I keep giving you tells because because I'm just describing what she looks like. Um there's a tightness there in her smile. So it's like yeah, don't don't you 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 got me. You don't need to do any more. <laughs> so, I say, well, I must also warn you that there will be a number of my friends from the offices who will also be in attendance, and they can be rather a rowdy bunch. Oh, I'm sure I can manage. It's and I, um, and I think take another sip of tea. It's like, sorry, my 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 my. I had a thought and it went away in the middle of that for some reason. I think she'll just say like, I'm sure I can manage. It's yeah, no, I think that's that's what she says. Yeah. Uh, and I think that probably like we kind of like fall into like, I, I realize it's time to retreat back to safe discussion. So I start to like regale you with tales of all of the entirely unsuitable matches that my mother has tried to pair me with. Yeah, lots of sympathetic uh, noises and words about every single one. <laughs> oh, you too. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, so, uh, Grisha, do you have a do you have a scene you want to call? Because you, I would like to do a visitation with both my sister and our mother, if that is all right. Uh, I hate to call the same performers back, but no, seems, totally okay. That seems the the most logical place to start. 
uh, for Grisha's kind of opening. Uh, Are you visiting your sister? I think I'm taking mother to officially visit. Okay. I'm escorting mother. Uh, uh, the count's going to be around, so I'll see if I I'll pay a resolve token if I want to jump in later. Okay. Um, and uh, I think this is a uh, one of those things that mother insists on formally doing on a fairly regular basis to going to see Shura. I'm hoping it will inspire you to finding a nice girl and settling down. And uh, I think we should possibly start at uh, at the time that uh, tea is officially served. Does that sound about right? Yeah. And uh, where would we be in your house? Where would we be taking tea? Um. Probably the hmm. it, it is probably a drawing room of some sort. It's probably her. Let's see. Would the count have enough drawing rooms that she'd have a favorite? Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's the one with these like uh, nice drapes and uh, large windows, so so the outside world could be seen quite well. It's great views. Um, not a metaphor for anything at all, uh, whatsoever. Might I also suggest that um, the Count keeps his apart his uh, house very old-fashioned. Like, perhaps you haven't installed the electric lights yet, and uh, <laughs> there's definitely no other symbolism there at all. Electric lights are not a necessary thing for a proper Russian household. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, dear. <laughs> And I mean, it's just in such stark contrast to like, you know, that that very modern tea room that we were just in. And, but, you know, I definitely, I, as your mother, feel very much more at home here. Of course. Um, and I think uh, Shura's probably, she served the tea herself. She likes doing that. Um, I mean, because she, her one indulgence is she has a particular like, uh, uh, kind of tea, or a particular way she likes her tea served. She just does it herself, uh, but she, 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 in she put she tries to make sure that everyone knows that like it's not because she has low opinions of the servants. It's just that she just likes it. This is a specific way. That's just her thing. Sure. Just uh, and you can you can charge me a resolve token the, for this. What is one thing I'm a possibly oblivious to you having wanted to do after you were married? Like I am getting married and I have this idea that we're going to travel or, uh, or set up that, that you have, that is definitely not, has metaphorically not happened. Um, yeah, I, I like the idea of travel. I, I think uh, you probably mentioned some sort of like, oh, I'm meeting with some industrialist from America uh, or we went to do some, you know, some venture of some sort, and we would take a tour of the of the of that continent. Oh well, you'd also you know travel books sort of thing now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> books about travel. I never knew why anyone would want to leave in the first place. Everything that you need is right here. But mother. The uh, publishing company that my friend would like to start uh, has already sold several travel guides, including producing ones for the French who are coming to see us. This publishing scheme, is this another one of your, your quick Get, what, what is the term like getting rich quickly schemes is I, I just I don't understand why you won't marry someone 
you you wouldn't have to pretend to be a, 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 some sort of professional if you would just find a nice young lady. I mean, look at look at how Shura has has this absolutely beautiful home. Yes, with her husband who has no job. Oh, I'm sorry, that would be incorrect. Shura's husband is an officer of the military. Yes, he he's earned his. He's earned his stripes long ago in Afghanistan, and he's he's established himself. But there are more ways to finding stature than just than what uh, Victor has done. I'm, well, I I'm sure. I certainly wouldn't want Grisha going to war. I wouldn't want anything to happen to him. He's not built for it. I am indeed not built for war. However, I am quite experienced in making good investments. That does not mean one always chooses the best. That's what your father liked to say too, dear. I'm, I'm sure Grisha just needs the the one investment like 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 you said Grisha it's um it you only need one to really pay off um and one needs well, more than one investment to pay off it is a uh, it's a lifetime of risk for reward well that doesn't sound am, like any way to live I am not some cheap gambler. Um, I'm a, a person who has makes educated guesses, but in any case, my serene sister, I thought you would enjoy this uh, this uh, early publisher's imprint of a of our book on Florence. I think with that, the door to the drawing room opens and in steps Count Victor Kuznetsov. You notice I, that uh, the plates are, are just beautifully rendered ah. with those statues you've always admired. My, my dear Baron. And he uh, walks over and kisses his wife chastely on the cheek and then uh, takes uh, Daria's hand and says, Mama. Oh, uh, Count! It's so good to see you. I didn't, I didn't know you were at home. I have She's only returned. Solitary. I've only returned for a moment. Uh, my work at the ministry calls me back. Um, as a matter of fact, my uh, my dear wife, uh, I'm afraid I will not be able to take you to the opera tonight. It is such a shame. We'll have to give up our box. Oh, that's that's understandable. The, the, the work comes first. Un um. Unless, you, please excuse me, uh, Grigory Antonovich, but if you are at liberty, I know that my wife dearly wishes to see Miss Lind. It would be my great joy to see my sister to the opera this evening. After all, you are called away to your work. I say that looking at my mother quite intently. I think there's the, the click of heels and the bow and your servant, sir. Thank you very much. Your serenity. Oh, he's such a charming man. Oh, sure, you must, you must be so pleased to have, have uh, married such a, a well-mannered and professional man. Maman, yeah. uh, Maman you uh, flatter me and I do not stand flattery well. <laughs> she titters again. <laughs> that is what Mama is known for, her flattery. Uh, dear, dear Countess, uh, I shall see you uh, later this evening, I pray. If I have a moment, I shall try and attend you at, during the interval. And with that, he steps out, closes the door behind him, and <laughs> leaves the world much colder than it began. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I am go ahead. sorry that your, your husband's duties have taken him from you and that I'm a poor substitute. 
Oh, his company. Oh, Grisha, you, you need not have to try to match uh, Victor, Victor's stature. You're, you're, you're delightful company. Uh, I would be glad to have your, to have such at the opera. I think uh, Shura is like, she's holding the book, uh, the the copy, and just kind of like just absentmindedly, like like just kind of like, well, not stroking it, but like just like tapping her fingers. It's like she looks like she really wants to read it, but like she's she's being all graceful and whatnot. I've secured that for you. It is yours. You don't shouldn't feel that you need to return it. I know how much you have always loved Florentine art. Mm. The Italians, so scandalous. <laughs> it's 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 a delightful present, Grisha. Thank you very much. Of course. And now, Mama, that you uh, don't approve of sculpture. It is it is far too far too vulgar to be seen in public spaces, and yet here we are, just decorating everything as as they do on the continent. So. Well, I understood that Moscow was more to your liking this time of year. Yes, no, I do. I do. I oh, that's right. Um, Shura, I did hear that 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 lovely young man from the the Volokov family visited you. Is that correct? Uh, yes, yes. Prince Prince Valentine uh, uh, called upon uh, as is in town and did call upon for a visitation he's he is he is he is prince valentine I, is he married yet i would assume someone like him wouldn't stay on the market for too long he he is not as of yet he oh, is disappointing <laughs> he's he is uh well he wants to make it right i suppose he he wants to ensure that it is a marriage that will last. Oh, well, tell us about some of your other friends who have been happily married recently. <laughs> uh, I think uh, Shura shoots uh, Grisha like a, <laughs> an apologetic sort of, I'm sorry. And uh, probably will. <laughs> I, don't know. I think, I think, uh, I think uh, if we can end on this particular note, uh, I'll suggest the name of uh, at least somebody that I you that we both know is is considering divorce, but that may not be gossip yet. Hmm. Why don't you tell me about uh, your good friend Irina? Hmm. I think uh, uh sure we're like uh, shoot like a. Shooting looks, uh, like kind of like a furtive look at towards her mom, and she says, "Like, well, since you since you asked, uh, dear Irina, which you know, as you know, is married to uh, the Baron. Sorry, look at the random name list. It's like what's that? To the Baron Alexei." Uh, Trifonov, there we go, that's the name. So I'll have to note that down. So Trifonov, there we go. Uh, is married to the Baron uh, Alexei Trifonov and has been for quite some time, have almost five years to uh, the next month or so. Um, and I think, not not sure what the details of the story, but the, the story that Shiro tells tell is like, um let's see how would she know that they're that she's thinking of a divorce um i don't know sure it seems like the type that like people come to her go to her to get advice um because you know she got she's got her stuff to, she's got her life together she must have pearls of wisdom um and i think but i think but sure won't take won't just dish but she will just say that like there has there has there has been some talk in the city that there was hastiness to the to the marriage and 
I uh, one of the two has been quite successful at covering up such cracks, but hastiness just seems so unfortunate. I yes, I would. I do want to remind. They seemed so advantageous for each other. They, it's it seemed to fit. It 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 really did at the time, but... Their parents were so delighted. Sorry, the mic's falling. Um, that's partly for my tittering. Um, yes, we, we, we remember there was much joy at their, at their marriage. We were, we, we were all there. We were all invited. Everyone seemed... It's, everything seemed set. Oh, and it was such a beautiful marriage, too. I'm sure that if Irina is having troubles, she should pray on it. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm sure Lord Above would, would guide them to save Harvard, but for now, it may, it may not seem the case. I think that's the perfect place to cut out. Mm. Okay, folks, I think that was a pretty good visitation chapter. So, click that off. Reputation. Uh, mine seems easy. I haven't done anything yet. I'm just as scummy as, as I was, so I'm good. Anyway. Sam, I didn't really do anything. <laughs> Yeah, it's one. It, it's one of those visiting chapters where you're just kind of feeling out the characters. I don't know. If, I mean, I uh, I held two social. Uh, uh, That's true. Uh, events with as much grace as I can see. Um, well, then again, I did so. I didn't do so in a way that compromised my desires or incurred considerable hardship. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at this and I was like, uh, didn't really compromise my desires. Or like, give me hardship. Although seeing him sucks. <laughs> yes, yes, it does. It's, <laughs> it's going to it's going to get worse before it gets better. Great. All yeah. right. Uh, so, uh, I wonder if I can coax him into a duel. You can't duel your own father. No, somebody <laughs> else dueling him. Oh, that would happened to my husband. <laughs> possibly, but I I would ignore any insult. That would be honor is for old men. Oh, wait, I'm old now. Damn it. Mortality. <laughs> All right. So uh, on to rumor and scandal. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna say that uh, we definitely should do one round. Um, if people want to pass after that, it's okay. I, I, you know, because it seems like we tend to, I mean, there's not a problem with putting a bunch of rumors out, especially early, but like, yeah, some they're gonna come in or they're not. So, yeah. um, let's see. We start with Serafina in the intros tonight. So I'm gonna start with Serafina tonight. Great. You got a rumor for us? Um, I think one that we already established um, that the duel that killed my husband. People assumed that I was sleeping with the man he fought. Mm. Um, which I have to come up with a name for that guy, I guess. I'll, go, I'll give you a name. Wait a minute. Didn't we uh, come up with a name for him? Did we? Yes, Alexei Nikolaevich. Oh, okay, great. Uh, oh, wait, that was your husband. Yeah, that was my uh, husband. Yeah. Um, uh, Vadim Karavatsov is in the thing, and it looks great. Wait. Oh, no, it's gone. No, yeah, that that stuff is super temporary. Uh, let's not do Karavatsov because that's the family name. Oh, um, great, um, Sergeyevich, maybe. No, do we have we have one of those? Yeah, right? that, 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 yeah. Do we? No, we don't. Uh, or we, we could just do. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So what was that again? What was his name? Uh, I forget what the first one was now. Like, just say Vasily, Vasily Olegovich. Mm 
done. Great. Okay, uh, Richard, you got a rumor for us, or do you want to spread an existing rumor, of which there's one unspread rumor? Um, I think there's a rumor in the... Uh, lettered world of the intelligentsia that Kostya's last comedy was booed off the stage in Paris. Oh, shit. You drama queen bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't you say know. it was true. I didn't say it happened. I just said people are saying that. Yeah. It's just that people are saying God. Hey, what can you say? You put pearls before swine. Uh, so, uh, Daryl, you got a rumor for us? Uh, so, I think that there is a rumor that the Count Victor Kuznetsov is keeping a mistress near the barracks that he visits fortnightly. I'm just really trying to push that Anna Karenina thing. Yeah, push it, push it. And Leandro. Um, there's a rumor that Prince Valentin is suddenly seeking marriage to provide cover for an affair he's conducting with a married person. Oh, juicy. Beautiful. Uh, I'm going to take the coward's way out, at least initially. I am definitely going to spread the rumor about Kostya's last comedy <laughs> being booed off the stage. <laughs> it's a right. lie. It was only booed the first two performances. After that, people thought it was camp, like cats. Amazing. I should have known not to put them in the furry <laughs> costumes. <laughs> right? So it was truly a performance ahead of its time. Everyone sings. <laughs> yeah, it's certainly one for the ages. Oh, do I want to come up with anything? Um, oh, yeah. Yep. So uh, my own beloved sister Anna Sergeyevna is uh, deeply in love with Valia. Oh, He's a catch. It's you know, she's she's sitting on the precipice of old maidhood. So, uh, so this goes back to uh, Leandro. Ooh, I do also want to spread one of those. These are very juicy rumors. I want them to be used at some point. Um, yeah, they're real good. Yeah. Let's see. But which one do I want to spread? Too many choices. Um, I'm going to spread uh, the count having a mistress. That might, that might spur sure to, be, to, to do stuff. Yeah. Dear. Uh, but, uh, Daryl. Let's see. Uh, I think that... Hmm. There is a rumor that Grisha and Shura, uh, Grisha's father is still alive and hiding out somewhere in Africa. What? What? Which would make the Countess Lilia a bigamist. <gasps> oh my God. Unless they divorce, which is possibly even bigamist. more scandalous. I thought War and Peace was the soap opera, but there's a <laughs> soap opera up here, I'm just saying. 
A bigamist, you say? That's a good idea for play. <laughs> Just maybe don't call it the bigamist if you're going to perform it in English. Yeah. Oh, right. There's a copyright issue, isn't there? <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Where are we in the rumor fair? Uh, Richard. Um, well, I was going to spread a rumor about the uh, the countess, but uh, that's just too good. Uh, so I was going to create a rumor about the candidate. So I think I'm just going to spread that one. That's great. And finally, Serafina. Oh, I'm going to make a rumor about the Countess. Um, <laughs> there is a rumor that Countess Alexandra is pregnant. <gasps> Serioja. <laughs> Which... Uh... As far as I know, it's not the actual pronunciation. It's Serioja. Yeah. Sorry, Kira. Just it's <laughs> fine. Russian names are hard, folks. Russian in general is hard. Russian is it's it's a beautiful language to all our Russophone friends. Oh, it is actually a beautiful language. It's a stunning language. It's very challenging to learn how to pronounce things correctly. True fact, I have refreshed my memory on how to write Cyrillic cursive, which is um, not what you expect. <laughs> uh, uh, cool. Guess what, folks? Mm. In 19th century Russia, we write letters. We, we write letters. Mm. It's the epistolary phase. Uh, up to A player may make up to two letters. Uh, you can also write letters from your connections. It's totally good, but two letters per, so that we don't just make this into, you know, good society, the epistolary version. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, when I played the LARP, you get to actually write the letters. Oh my God, that's so good. It was very good. Of You know, of course, same rules. You don't actually have to write the whole letter out. Writing the whole letter out. <laughs> Does anyone have a letter they wish to write? Yeah, I think I'm going to write a letter from Princess Daria Yurevna Volokova to her son, Valentin. <laughs> um, she is currently abroad um, on vacation, not staying abroad because that would be scandalous. Uh, and uh, her letter reads, uh, my dearest, oh, what's his actual, Valia, um, which actually, do you like your mother? I haven't decided yet. Let's see how I feel okay, after great. this letter. Great, awesome. We haven't even met her in person and I'm excited about it. Um, okay. Um, my dearest Valia, I believe that you would enjoy the pleasures of the Amalfi Coast about as much as I have. That is to say that it is far too humid, far too hot, and the locals are exceedingly rude. However, I have managed to find some excellent fabrics that I'm going to be bringing home for you. I believe that it is about time you had a new wardrobe. And I found some delightful books of poetry. I just think that I want you to feel as though you had been here with me, because as though we, even though that we are apart, I think of you daily and miss you with all my heart. And I'm remembering that time we went to Greece and we met that very silly man with his monkey and his accordion. Anyway, much love from your mother. I hope that you are finding things peaceful and well, probably chilly in um, Petersburg. I will be home soon, thinking of you, sending you lots of kisses and warm sunshine. And I love you very much, your mother. Daryl loves her. <laughs> Valentine hates her. That makes Far, too <laughs> Far too smothering. Far too smothering. Oh, that was wow. good. This, this gives me an idea that's impossible to resist. <laughs> from uh, from Konstantin Sergeyevich uh, Katavasov to. Her Honor, the, Her Excellency, the Countess Liliana Vitalievna Efimova. Dearest Lily, 
I have returned to Petersburg. How I long for us, how I long for those days we spent together on the coasts of Italy. I do wish that I could attend your studio in Rome and, of course, attend upon you. But sadly, duty has recalled me to our native land. My dearest Tabby has welcomed me into her home. The apartments are smaller than I than I would have thought appropriate for a woman of her station, yet they are well furnished in that every stick of furniture my family has ever owned is crammed into them. One would think that if she was so hard up on money that she has to take such a small place, she would have sold some of the more useless things. But thank goodness she has not sold any of my dear uh, grandmother's items. I, I read the Princess Yekaterina's notes and journals with avid interest. My dear, they are the most scandalous thing ever. I mean, more scandalous than you and I even. I can't even imagine. Our, our grandparents during the war, of, uh, during the Patriotic War, were quite saucy. Do you know that she was a procurer for two of her friends? It's the most bizarre thing. I do wish you were here. I long for the day I hear the announcement that you have arrived by ship or have taken train from Warsaw or some other dreary section of Europe. Do come soon, and if you can't come, write. And if you do write, send me, send me a postcard, or better yet, send me something you have painted. With all my dearest love and respect and admiration and longing, yours very much, Connie. Who was that two cat? Oh, that was that was. Uh, I'm sorry, not to the Countess Lily. That was to uh, to uh, Countess Daria, Princess Daria, of course. Oh. I know uh, I'm the worst, right? I love I'm every minute of that that was, that <laughs> These are some moms we've got. I like them. They're they're moms that wish to, they are M I L K M I L C's moms. I'd like to court moms with money. I did I stutter? <laughs> Single mothers with money. Moms, I'd like to court them. The Connie, the Con Connie's story. Single mothers with money. Uh, I have. A brief letter I would like to send to Valya. Uh, from Grisha, if that is all right. I don't want to interrupt anybody. Uh, I think it's addressed to Valya, my dear friend. My dear and serene friend, since that is the proper address for a prince. Uh, Uh, and I, uh, to about, talk about the early successes of our publish. Uh, I first I remind you of the uh, the lovely times we had together as uh, when you were a young student in our gymnasium, and a uh, and a uh, and uh, how good it is to see you. Uh, around Petersburg society and not drawn into the stuffiness and coolness of Moscow, which is too cold a place for your warm soul. Uh, and after the flattery is done, I tell you about the successes of our publishing venture uh, and then talk about some of the more ambitious projects we want to undertake. Uh, and then just sort of trail off with, uh, uh, I, I talk about the, uh, our, our book on the, the culture of the region of the Caucasus uh, and the, the further reaches of our wonderful empire uh, that deserve authors who are willing to explore them uh, and uh, talk about how expensive the publishing of books is, uh, but how good the return is and talk about uh, the sales that we have already made on the uh, the Florentine travel and, and the other Italian travel guides. I do understand your mother is in Amalfi. 
and uh, making her own tour of the continent as, uh, as more people in Russia should do. Uh, and uh, do hope that uh, we will have a, a good chance to uh, get coffee sometime very soon. I think, I think that, that, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think that um, that uh, Valentine gets this letter and probably like immediately writes back um, something like, and of course because he's so like innocent and with regards to other things, he's just like, uh, "My dear Grisha, it is so good to hear from you. Yes, I, I do often think kind, uh, think fondly of the days that we used to spend in school together. Uh, it is." something that has weighed heavy on my mind of late, although for some reason uh, I cannot see why I would think back to such halcyon times. Uh, you are indeed correct that my mother is touring the Amalfi Coast at this moment and has, has sent a number of parcels home with threats that she will be dressing me in all of the latest fashions, as I am sure you are aware. She wants to marry me off to literally any woman I will say yes to. Uh, unfortunately for her, I plan to make that as difficult as possible. But I am so glad to hear of your successful ventures and that you are so successfully navigating the swift rivers of the busy publishing world. I'm sure that because you are branching out into this new area of travelogues that you are wishing to consult with my mother for her in in-depth expertise of her continental tour. And though she is a woman who is loath to do any work other than the Lord's work, I'm sure I could convince her to let you interview her. Like, and just completely misunderstand that you're actually asking for money and you're like, so I just like write voluminously about like, she said so many wonderful things about all of these artists that she's seen and all of the fashions. And I'm sure that you will be able to make a fine publication from all of her experiences. Uh, and then I kind of like trail off into like trivialities for a moment. And then there's like a, there's a point where I get back to the point where it's like, um, my dear Grisha, I have invited your sister to come out for this, uh, the ball that we will be having in the next season. And I do hope that we might be able to reconnect if you would also like to attend. Uh, it has been very trying of late with a endless carousel of women being paraded around like racehorses and my mother's stable. And I would very much prefer just the company of good conversation that I think so fondly back to. Please let me know if you can make it. All my best, Valya. From Konstantin Sergeyevich Katavosov to Her Excellency Countess Alexandra Fyodorovna Kuznetsova. My dear Countess, thank you very much for receiving myself and my uh, dear sister the other day. I hope you do not think it ungracious that I should thank you for a common politeness of society, but you should know that she was, she felt it quite deeply. Dear, my dear Natanka uh, could say nothing except that your your Excellency was the, uh, oh, how shall I say, comme il faut does not seem to even cover the the parameters of, of her deep respect for everything about you. I do hope that you uh, would be, do me the honor of speaking to your husband about the possible patronage of one of my plays. It was a quite, it was quite the success in Paris. However, it is slightly racy for Petersburg and in Moscow, I'm sure it would be closed on the first night by order of his Imperial Excellency. But be that as it may, I'm sure that with the upstanding support of such a uh, fine minister to his majesty, that it would be a sure to be a success and return a handsome profit for everyone involved. Please uh, do call upon me I mean, upon your early, uh, at whatever your convenience is, I am staying with, I have the pleasure of staying with my beloved daughter uh, in her apartments and of course, the address is slightly downscale for someone of our rank, but, you know, yours most respectfully and with the greatest and deepest admiration, Konstantin Sergeyevich.
You're muted, Richard. If I may have a letter from Ludmila. Gonna hand over a resolve token there. Oh wait, oh, you're gonna write a letter from Ludmila. Yeah, yes, oh, I'm gonna write a letter from Ludmila. Knock yourself out. Uh, oh no. <laughs> uh, and I think this is slipped under the door of your apartments in the very early hours of the morning. That seems right. Um, and uh, I've got to refresh everybody's names. And it's uh, addressed to my dearest and beloved friend, Toma. Oh. It has been some time since I saw you at the train station and fantasized for a moment that you were waiting there for me. How appropriate that you were waiting for your father, whose from what I hear, underappreciated on the Paris stage. I was returning from my time in the country and uh, had attempted to abide by my family's wishes that I would explore a vocation to the monastic life. but I have decided I would prefer life as a hermit in Petersburg. I would treasure though a chance to take a small break from the solitude, which I find myself in far too often if, if there are a chance I could see you and talk about our days in school. <clears throat> I find myself short on company with very few friends of late and uh, would appreciate a chance to see you again. Your devoted friend, Ludmila Vladimirovna Kovayova. I would love to pay Resolve Token to have read that letter. <laughs> I give it back to you. I seal it, I reseal it and you get it, but I, I have read it. You have read it, that sounds great. That's um, good. Do you want me to pay you or should or does yeah, that pay me? That's good. Okay. <laughs> um, I uh, keep it in the family, darling. I think I have to write back. Um, and this letter is also like, where are you staying? Are you like in a family house or where? I think I am in a hotel. Okay. Um, it's, it's not. It's not in the fashionable district, but it's not. I'm not poverty stricken. Right. And and here's the thing is that Toma lives meanly, but actually has access to a great amount of money because she's clever. And so yours is delivered by hand by a messenger in like beautiful livery, white gloves, the whole thing. Um, oh, mine was definitely perfumed. I forgot to yeah. mention that. It was oh, definitely yeah. perfumed. Great. That makes sense. Um, so that's, that's how yours is delivered, like in the middle of the day at a very seemly hour. Um, and it reads, um, my dearest Mila, 
It has indeed been many years since we have seen each other. I regret the circumstances which surrounded our last parting and would like the chance to make it up to you. If you would like to meet me at my apartments on Tuesday afternoon, my father will be out and we can spend some time together and learn all we want to learn about what has been going on in each other's lives. I have been in London, as you know, of late and I have many things to tell you about what I have seen. And in thinking of you, I may have picked up one or two things um, and would like to give them to you. With, <laughs> with great sincerity and eagerness for your company, Toma. Sincerity. <laughs> Never heard it called that before. Um, Listen, to what all the kids in Russia are calling it. <laughs> know that Richard, you and me have done two letters. I think uh, Daryl has two. Uh, Leandro, have you done? I've not done a letter. Um, oh my god! I haven't, I haven't done my second letter yet. So, uh, Actually, well, you did the reply, so that's technically a letter. Who did I else? Did I write to? I only wrote to Krisha. Uh, you wrote front. You wrote as didn't you write? Oh no, wait. You're right. I was thinking of uh, Serafina wrote this, Daria. Right. My bad. My bad. Because I do want to. I do want to write a letter to Shura as her as her mother. Daryl and I are very alike, but I don't, I'm the one. That wrote. <laughs> I mean, you know, you're under. You're an undercut away. I, I don't know what to say. The Countess Lilia Ifamova definitely wants to write to her daughter Shura. Um, <laughs> That's it. <laughs> my dearest Shura, imagine my surprise when one of the ladies that I lunch with has told me that you are expecting. <laughs> now, I will not fault you for not telling me immediately. However, I just want you to know that I am so happy that you have finally taken this first step towards motherhood. It has been some years since you have married your husband and yet have failed to produce an heir. I have been wondering profusely towards your welfare or perhaps towards his, uh, but I am so happy to hear that all of my fears have been misfounded. And I only right to tell you that I will be visiting as soon as possible to help you prepare. After all, I have born two children into this world and I can only, I cannot wait to share all of my experiences and this next step with you. You have made me so terribly happy, though not as happy as if you had told me yourself, your loving mother. <laughs> God. Um. Huh. All right. Okay. Um, get this combined by that. Um, oh, I do want to uh, want to ask a clarification. Um, when Constantine wrote that letter to uh, Shura, she said that he said that like they had come over with. Was it with uh, his young youngest sister? Or was it just another sister? I think. I think I heard something along those lines. Yes, with Anna Sergeyevna. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. So I just want to clarify because uh, I'm I'm writing a letter from Anna to Connie because they're not living in the same house. Uh, um, dearest Connie, I can't tell you how much I've enjoyed your company in the last few weeks. After all, I had only heard rumors of how you had boldly reinterpreted uh, La Dobo in Constance over in Paris and how, well, how even some things proved too libertine for that cradle of revolution. Um, but as much as I've enjoyed your, your, <laughs> your literary output and as much as I've enjoyed your company as you take on Russia by storm once more. I do confess that I would like some advice on, on, a mat on a matter or so, and I believe you are well versed in this matter, given how, after all, you had arranged for dear Tamara's marriage. So you must know a thing or two in that regard. 
of how one exactly to attain such a relationship. <sighs> to put it to put it bluntly, dear Connie, I am running out of options, and I'd hope that with your direction, I would find a match suitable for myself. So certainly, hopefully, more suitable to myself than how Tamara found her match. Um, do you know of this Prince Valentine? I, I confess I scarcely know much, although apparently tongues have begun to wag, and if they, if they deem that I must be in love with this, this bachelor, then I would like to know if it is worth falling in love with one such as him. I'd, ver I'd appreciate all help that you could offer to me in this venture. Yours, uh, yours, your, your youngest sister, dear Anna. I like how you think you need you to remind me of that. <laughs> yeah. She just words you forgot uh he'd forgotten um and i think this my well, second letter god a lot of people wanting stuff from shura huh um i'm sure she probably sent them on like some polite sort of yeah yeah, yeah i heard but i think uh the letter i'm gonna write that we'll see is to grisha um and it's it's not just a letter it's actually an entire package with a letter in it, and it's it's the book that he gave her, uh, sent back, and the letter writes, my dearest Grisha, I appreciated uh, your visit um, the earlier week or so, and mother and mother's presence as well. I. I truly appreciated the present, the the gift. I, I had already read it cover to cover, and I find I found it quite illuminating um, in regards to certain aspects of Florence that I had not known of. But it's it is an object too dear to keep around our household and so I must send it back to you it is it, it is a lovely it is a lovely uh, piece of work and one if one that one that can be shared for to the rest of the world then I do hope it brings you all the success that you deserve for now it is a it is a book that belongs to a more to a more discerning and more modern house and it jars with where i am still i may have read it cover to cover i there might there might be detail or two that slipped my mind so i would very much like to have the chance to visit and pick up on it perhaps sometime in the future. I appreciate, I, once again, I appreciate the visit and I would hope to see more of you in the future. It need not, need not be a an update on, it, it did not be transactional. Your presence or your company is, well, it's worth more than most. Your sister, Shira. Okay. We've written letters. Let's do this novel thing. Uh, I feel like this is the big ball. I guess it's at uh, Daria Yuryevna's place. All right. I bet it's like some sort of like huge thing that my mother threw it when she came back from Amalfi. <laughs> it's full of her stories, like always. 
Oh, this will be good. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, she's perfect. I love her. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes, with Roma, Roma entertainers and... Uh... Oh, yes. Excellent, 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 excellent. Um, I think given the paucity of uh, characters we have on the ground, we can assume anybody is here. Um, so, yeah. Where shall we begin? <clears throat> I mean, I would love to have like my reunion with my mother be happening over cocktails just before the guests start to arrive because I've shown up unceremoniously late, of course, to oh put, put this off as long as possible. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Sounds great. Cool. Um, so yeah, let me see. What's my name again? Do, 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 do. So many names to keep track of. There you go. Okay, great. Um, and so you show up like like in the moments before the guests are going to arrive, like maybe 20 minutes before people are showing up. Yes. And like I, I did not immediately seek you out. I was actually sneaking into like a sitting room to try and like raid the liquor cabinet uh, to like fortify myself before I ran into you. <laughs> but lo and behold. Lo and behold, I'm by the liquor cabinet because I've met my son. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, it's so good to see you. Welcome back. Valentine, darling. And she's like draped in some sort of strange Italian dress that you've never seen before and like all sun kissed and whatever. And she comes rushing over to you and embraces you and is smothering you with kisses for a, what feels like 10 minutes. <laughs> I just kind of like stand there, like, you know, like bracingly with like the like the the occasional pat on the back. It's like, yes, it's it's so good to see you and just kind of enduring it. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It's so good to see you. It's a shame that you are so late yet again, but that's all right. Now, did you know that there are several eligible young ladies coming this evening? Did you want to put on the new outfit that I got you? I had no doubt that there would be many, many eligible young ladies tonight. And of course, I will have the footman dress me in just a moment as soon as I have, have, a, have a drink. <laughs> oh, of course, darling. Let me get you something. And she snaps her fingers and a footman walks over and starts to like make some sort of drink for you without asking what you want because they know what you want. And she says, well, of course there are going to be eligible young ladies, my darling. I just want to make sure that you're situated. As I'm sure it will come with time, mother. Um, but please tell me, how was, how was the trip? You seem your letters were effusive and plentiful. It was wonderful, absolutely wonderful. We must go sometime, or you must go. You'll take your new wife. Maybe that's where you'll do your honeymoon. That sounds so, so lovely, yes. Um, oh, by the way, I wanted to let you know that I've invited um, the Kuznetsovs and also um, Grigore uh, Zivanov, uh, Zinoviev, and uh, yes, uh, you know, some of my old, old friends from, from school. Oh, that sounds lovely. You know, I always did love Grigori. Such a nice young man. Yes, he, he is rather, isn't he? Does he have any sisters? She's married, mother. Oh, that is unfortunate. Sometimes the good ones are taken. Anyway, um, who else did you, you said the Katavasovs? Kuznetsovs. Well, right? Kuznetsovs. Kuznetsovs. Yes. yes, 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 yes. Yes, in, in fact, uh, that's um, Grigori's sister and her new husband. Well, not so new. They've been together a few years. But I've just heard that they are expecting, which she didn't tell me about when I had tea with her last month. But I did hear about that. Delightful for the poor thing. They've been married for two years. Can you imagine not conceiving for two years? It must be so tiresome to think of all the work one must do to get the thing done. Hmm. Well, the the uh, count strikes me as a very um, militaristic man, so I'm sure he he tried as much as he could. Well, he's a very dutiful man. Of course he did. Oh, you know, I made a point of inviting that young baroness, Tamara Konstantinovia Shivna. You know, she is recently back from London and out of mourning. 
Oh, mother, isn't isn't she the one who is the daughter of that the disgraced playwright that everyone oh, is talking oh, oh, about? Disgraced playwright. Who cares? She has plenty of money and is very well set up here in Russia. And I think that she would be a lovely match. I mean, anyone would be a lovely match at this point, darling. Really, you must get something together. I mean, but mother, I don't need to. I don't need to marry someone because they have plenty of money. We have plenty of money. Well, she's also. You know, my darling, that I want you to be happy. Yes, and, and I'm trying to find happiness. I just haven't found the right person that I want to be happy with yet. Well, the reason that I thought of Tamara is because she is unusual. Yes, I'm well aware of how unusual Tamara is. Oh, that's and... right. You and she had that little thing a few years back. What was it even about? Um, it, it's nothing. It's nothing. I'm sure that we'll, we'll apparently just... We'll, talk it out tonight. There was some sort of party war. Didn't the two of you, you felt that she was, I can't remember. It doesn't matter. Point is, she's grown up a lot. She lost her husband after all. She's probably very mature now. Mm, I'm not sure that even death would change her. You but, um... going, but listen, I am going to go and get things ready, and then I'm going to send some lovely young ladies through to you if you do not approach me in the ballroom. So make sure that you're there promptly in the next, ooh, ten minutes. Go get dressed. Uh, it'll take me much longer to sort through all the clothes that you've sent, Mother. Um, give me at least an hour. Don't worry. I had someone lay out something suitable for you. You're not going to have to make any choices at all. Yes, yeah. Mother. <laughs> your, your Excellencies, uh, their Excellency, the Count and Countess... So have arrived. Oh, lovely. I'm going to go greet them, darling. You go upstairs and get dressed. Mm. Yes, if, um, of course. And I just think, think silently, it's like, if only I could warn Shora what's to come for her. I am obsessed with this character. <laughs> this is great. I love it. Oh, my God. She's the devil. <laughs> she is not. She's a lovely woman. She really is, but is also the devil. <laughs> Well, I mean, you can't be the devil all by yourself. Um, so I think the that's my mother. Um, yeah. Who should we interact with? A uh, wife of mine. <laughs> Probably should. Yeah. Um, although that earlier scene, that feels like that's what usually what happens when there's other people around. <laughs> I, my dear Alexander Fyodorovna, I'm not sure I completely approve of uh, Daria Yuryevna. She, she seems, she has so many foreign ideas. I know she may seem, she may seem wild, but we come here not for her sake, but for ourselves. There is a, there is a worth to being seen, to be part of Petersburg society. Uh, don't worry, Victor. We we need not stay long. If I understand, Alexandra, but she invites such bohemians, those awful Katavasovs. Well, they do carry story certain stories around them, but it is a it is a large enough ball. You, we don't have to we don't have to interact with anyone we don't deem we should. Did you truly receive Konstantin Sergeyevich last week? Yes, I thought it was. I thought it would be good to. Greet someone of who's provided so much to art and entertainment, and I thought it would be it. It was not. It was not a imposition on my time. I feel like it was perhaps too much of a condescension on your part, my dear. One must preserve. One must preserve the proprieties of our of our state. Don't you agree? I know, Victor. I I fully agree. I I think um I think I think she'll just like I don't know what else she'll say to that. <laughs> like, 
Oh, let's bring in, let's bring in Baron. I think I greet Grigori. Grigori Antonovich, what a delight to me. See your friend once again. And who are you right now? Sorry. Oh, yeah. Uh, this is still Victor. Okay. Uh, my dearest brother in law, how are things at the ministry? Ah, well, as always, one must fight for one's vision against the uh, obtuseness of one's peers, but I'm sure we'll all be as God ordains in the end. Uh, ordained by God. A vision of foreign affairs, a monograph by my dearest brother-in-law. <laughs> I can visualize it now. You do me too much credit, sir. I have no intention of writing for the vulgar press. No, my name in an imperial dispatch has always been the highest honor I've ever striven for. Is it too early in the evening to tempt you to a game of vent or perhaps wint, prep whist? I think it may be only an hour too early, my dearest brother. Yes. Well, I do, of course, owe uh, Alexander Fyodorov uh, at least the honor of one or two turns around the dance floor. Of course. And uh, you should probably beat the people who will provide you no competition first. Uh, well, one uh, meets all sorts at a party such as this, I think. But... Yes, but if we just sat only playing whist with each other, they would call you a snob until you beat them. The, I find that snob is a word uh, that the uncouth call their betters. Well, can I play a monologue token? Oh, sure. On, on, on Boris? Uh, Boris, Jesus. Boris. Hey, oh, no. whoa. Oh, hey, whoa. Wait, no. All <laughs> our aged characters. <laughs> on Grisha. <laughs> on Grisha. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, he's probably incredibly noticed that uh, Shira has kind of kept to herself during the entire conversation. I do want to know what he thinks about this marriage. Um... And remind me how monologue tokens work. What is the remind me in the audience at home? Oh, them. Uh, you may pay a monologue token uh, to make another character reveal their inner thoughts. This is completely inner monologue, so it's not revealed to the world at large. You may provide a, a topic or not, but in this case, uh, Shura has provided you a topic, Grisha. And uh, we'll just, uh, yep, cool. I'll just make sure this is all good. I think I'm looking at Grisha and I am thinking, where is that child that I used to know when I was her age? The one who did not give up pretending. The one who could be a grand duchess one moment and a heroic shepherdess the next, and then fling herself into a, an imaginary flame like a saint from the early church, and then pretend to be a knight rescuing a her heretic from some weird Western crusade of, against the heresies. Where is she in all of this? And what has he done? to her. I remind you that all happy marriages are alike. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think I think that uh, this sure seems like the point with Konstantin Sergeyevich 
uh, his beloved daughter and his uh, tender sister have to arrive and pay their respects to uh, their the man of the house, Prince Valentine. <clears throat> so I still don't know why I bear such a grudge against Tamara. <laughs> And I am totally down for it being petty AF, but I still I just don't know. Maybe it's just, you know, it could be that it's just really old. And so you're like, ugh, I don't like her, but we're both older now. Did so we like, like also go to school together or like maybe like a year abroad or something like that when we were younger? Oh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, we like traveled together. Maybe we did like the like, you know, grand tour thing mm -hmm. after school. That would be good, yeah. Okay. Um, and then I, I'd say there was probably like, maybe I entertained ideas that you and I would marry at some point because you were so like fiery and like not uh, not like any other woman my my mother would introduce me to. Um, but then like you like snubbed me for like some like very attractive person like in somewhere on the continent, and I just never forgave you. That would track. That makes sense. That's totally a thing I would do, particularly, well, basically anytime. <laughs> Any time, it's just <laughs> like ooh, pretty. <laughs> right. Yeah, right. so I've never quite forgiven you, and you do. You, have you ever noticed that I hold this kind of like iciness towards you, or no? Like, I don't. I don't think she does. Okay. I think, do you think I think we're like, close. What's that? Do you think we're close? I don't think we're close. I don't think we're really friends anymore. But I think it's just that like we aged out of being friends. Mm. Especially considering, I think when we got back from the Grand Tour is when I got married. <clears throat> and so to me, I'm like, oh, I got married and it was horrible and I turned into this whole other person. I think she is probably really excited to see you. Okay. Yeah. Exactly. Because like, she's back in Russia, her husband's dead, <laughs> she gets to have her life back. <laughs> Remembered all the good times. Okay, I got yeah, it. Yeah. 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 Now, Tabby Annie, if... We play our cards right. You'll both come out of this evening with the potential for a grand match. I know, Tabby. You think you don't need a husband. You've already had one, but you've already had one. What's wrong with having another? Especially if he's a man of good fortune and honor and, you know, much less likely to get murdered in some dreadful little affair. I think that of anyone here that is looking for conquests between the three of us, it is most likely you. And I do not need any help. Tabby, you're speaking to your father for goodness sake. And thank you. Well, I wish you good hunting. I hope that all of the women in this room are aware of just what a scoundrel you are, and I am going to go and get myself a vodka. I plan to make them aware, Tabby. <laughs> I'm sure you do. Annie. Annie. Yeah. yeah, read yeah. It up. <laughs> Annie. Yes. I think Did you did you not take the glass of wine I, I left out for you before we left to calm your nerves and make you presentable? Oh, I well well I had heard conflicting information that, that would I took a sip. I, I had one sip, and I did not want to take on as many libations as I as I could because uh, tongues might wag, things might get loosened. I wouldn't. I would like to keep some faculties within me, uh, w close to me, Connie. Uh, I don't have the I don't have the joie de vivre that you or camera clearly have. Annie, Sarah Bernhardt was easier to work with. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, my goodness. Toma loops an arm through Annie's arm and says, "My goodness, father, let the poor woman breathe." I am trying but you know if she tightly a little bit more with this my job will be easier. One moment. There is our lovely Prince Valentine. Valentine Stepanich. Greetings. It's such an honor to be in your home once again. Ah, uh, yes. Um, Konstantin Sergei... 
Sergeyevich, it's it is it's been a, quite a long time. I haven't seen you since uh, since Toma and I took that uh, tour of the continent. Um, you are looking every bit the uh, the dashing Frenchman that uh, that everyone has purported you to be. Exactly, nu nu parle en français. You can call me Connie. Oh, thank you. Yes, uh, and Toma. I, I quite <laughs> deliberately sweet don't call him that. <laughs> I quite deliberately switch to the informal address to see if you'll take the bait. And it's definitely that thing where he's too awkward to like say no. He's just like, yes, uh, Connie, so so wonderful to have you here. <laughs> like yeah. he's, he's he's not like strong enough to say no. I'm uh, so totally gonna mention that I call the I call Prince Valentin thou now. This is totally awesome. <laughs> um, yeah, Toma definitely swoops in and says. Please don't feel any pressure to call him that. He's just making something of an American of himself with his plays in Rhode Island. I take I take great offense to that. I was making myself more of an Englishman, which is no far no, which is no poor thing to be. I think. What is an island of Rhodes? It is apparently an area to the north where some of his plays have been performed. But Valia, it is so good to see you. Yes, Toma, it has been. A fair bit of time. It's been an entire marriage, darling. And she like half winks at you. <laughs> and I like like the, the color like brushes across my cheeks and I, I say, um, yes, yes, I'm I'm so sorry to have heard and I'm sorry I didn't reach out sooner, but it appears you are out of mourning and um please come in and enjoy yourselves. And and who is who is this? I do not believe I have had the pleasure of the introduction. Oh. Monsieur Le Prince, je vous présente ma petite sœur. Anna Sergeyevna. Uh, stand for it, Anna. <laughs> uh, Anna makes a awkward sort of bow, half bow, half curtsy, and realizes she did half of both, and neither of which. Um, and it just says, like, uh, it, it, it is a pressure to, to make your acquaintance, Prince Valentine. And he, like, greets you very formally. Like, he ignores the slight altogether and just, like, very gracefully, like, covers for you. And it's just like, yes, it is such an honor to meet you as well. Uh, this is your first time at the Volokov Estates. Is that true? Yes, it's, it, is, it is quite beautiful and expansive and quite, quite a lot of statues, I've noticed. Uh, and... <laughs> Well, I am sure you two are going to want to dance the first waltz together. It's clear that you're, it, it's clear. I must go pay my respects to your, your delightful mother, Prince Valentine. I will see you again. Perhaps we'd like to take a rubber of whist with me later. Or billiards. Yes, yes, quite. And I dive off into the crowd. <laughs> and I look over at Toma and I say, it's like, ah, well, at least he'll keep my mother busy for a bit. Well, they can both enjoy each other. Shall we get a drink? Please. <laughs> Will you be joining us, Anna Sarajeva? Sarajevanya? Yes, I would very much like to join you. I believe I need a few drinks. Well, there's no better place to find them than here. <laughs> and I, th I think I turned to Toma at this point and I'm saying, um, well, my dear, please tell me, what have you been up to? Well, I spent several years after <clears throat> the unpleasantness in London, um, mostly sketching, going to museums, meeting artists, you know, that sort of thing. How cosmopolitan. I just couldn't bear to be in Russia for the duration of my morning. So many people had so many things to say. Well, then please let me say that I won't say anything more about it. You are here to enjoy yourself. See, this is why I've missed you. You always know exactly what to say to make me feel better. And he just kind of smiles at that and it's just like, like, it's like, of course. Uh, and like, gets the, like, as soon as, and like gestures you towards the drinks, but then kind of like scowls behind your back. He still hasn't quite forgiven you. <laughs> Fair. Um, she pours you whatever drink we used to drink when we were traveling. I don't know what it was, if it was like, you know, Italian wine or like whatever. Um, and turns back and says, to renew friendships and hands you your glass. That's it. And I, uh, I raise it and I toast with you, and then uh, take a take a small sip, and then just like yes, uh, may our reunion be everything that I hope it is. Indeed, my dear friend. 
I was like, and then I, I think that I set the glass down. I was like, would you like to take a turn? And I like gestured towards the dance floor. I would like nothing better and puts her glass down and swoops off with you. And then abandons Anna. <laughs> to her <fate>. Totally abandons her. <laughs> she's, yeah. <laughs> no, she's drink she's busy drinking right now. Oh, 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 oh. Could, could could we toss Grisha at Anna then? Well, I was gonna see if I could get my sister, my half sister alone for a moment. Ooh. Please do. And then uh, I definitely want to talk to Princess Dark at some point. I, I think I walk up to Shura as she ends a dance and just tap her on the arm and just gently and just say, you look like you could use some air. I think uh, Shura doesn't trust herself to say uh, anything and she'll just like nod, nod and like kind of gesture to lead on. And I think I would I would I would gesture for uh, the count to uh, take one of the numerous young ladies who are here for uh, to be presented, uh, but who can't dance with the man of the hour. Uh, Vic, all at one time. I will go dance with uh, that charming young plain girl. Uh, what was her name? Sergey Anna something. <laughs> poor Anna. Oh, poor Anna. <laughs> I take Shura's arm and lead her out to one of the balconies or someplace and just, it has been so long since we had a moment to speak without your husband or our mother looking over us. And I have heard so many rumors about your happiness that I thought I should come to the source. Oh, Grisha, rumors are rumors. You know how this city goes. You take one walk down the Nevsky, next to the Nevsky, and suddenly they'll say, "Oh, they'll they'll speak of how your coat makes a bump of some sort," and suddenly five different theories would spring up. It's just, it's just, it's just talk, Grisha. It is. Then you're not pregnant. Believe me, if I if I if it were the case. You would know from the source. I am glad to hear it. I really just wanted to give you a chance to talk. I find myself not having much to say. Grisha. I've noticed. Are you happy? <clears throat> I am as happy as I could ever be. Is there something that makes you think otherwise? You are not as happy as you've ever been. I think I hand you a champagne at that moment. <laughs> I think she like cradles it, doesn't take a drink from it yet. And she says like, well, who I was is not who I am right now. We simply have different standards for happiness now. Then this is a, a form of happiness I don't understand. Perhaps you can tell me about it. This happiness that uh, makes you look so stern and sees only four smiles. Respond to that. Um, I think I, I think I'm sure we'll take a sip from the champagne. And she says, "Is that truly what you think you see?" Mother's not here. I'm not going to tell her what you say, and I'm not going to interfere with your marriage. I just want to know. If you're happy. Is that is that true? I fear what you would say if I spoke freely. Grisha, I if I were to say anything otherwise that I am as happy as I could be, would you truly not do anything? Well, 
you forget that when I was all of seven years old, I was forced to swear that I would protect you from the devil and all of his wiles. And I think one of the devil's wiles is unhappiness. So I just want to make sure I'm doing the job I promised I would do. Um, but if you tell me that you're happy, I'll believe you. I just want you to know that you have an advocate. I think um, Shira like takes another sip from the champagne and she says, hearing that does, that does make me happy. Prisha, I've... Hearing that is enough. It makes me happy. Good, then I would like you to look over a book on Genoa that we have uh, been considering. You know the topic far better than I do and suspect that you might know it far better than the author does. I, I think, um, sure, like, she, when she, she, she smiles at that, and I think you, you see it, it's not forced, um, for sure. And she says, like, I, I would be honored to help you in, in this venture of yours, Risha. I, I do believe it does have qu quite some potential. I'm very glad. Then I'm going to be forced to break away, and I trust that uh, you will devoutly pray for my soul while I go into the lion's den and talk to Lady Heretic and her uh, about okay. some funding opportunities she may have in the future. Grisha, I've never stopped praying for your soul. There won't come a day when I won't. Can I use a monologue token on Shura and just like get her like real honest, like ripping the guts open kind of like take on this? Wow. Uh, <laughs> take on what? On this venture? On everything? On the lies you are telling your brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Um. Okay, I forgot how <laughs> what the thrust of this is. Um, I love my brother dearly. I love him with all my heart. I know him, and then with that, I like to think I know him, and I know that. If I were to unburden myself, he would gladly take on those burdens. And and frankly, those are my burdens. I would not wish them on anyone else. He has enough troubles of his own. He does not need to take on mine as well. I've carried them for the past two years and I'll carry them for the next year and the year after that and the year after that. And I will do so willingly because they're mine. This is what I've decided. It would be unfair of me to Way Grisha down. And I think uh, I think she's 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 thinking this as like she like 
waves Grisha off to like to do his mingling. I give uh, you a very brotherly kiss on the forehead. Um, yeah, and I think I think uh, there's like a I think I think there's like a moment where like there was, there's I think you see like she kind of moves to like almost like I'm gonna give you a hug, but then I think she just like. She like sh shivvies you off like go go make your her packs with whatever devils lay inside there. You're so safe for tonight. I'll make sure of it. I'd like to do a real quick thing with uh, the Countess Staria, or the Princess Staria. Great. Maybe it's a. This can help wind things up, though. You know, we, we haven't even begun the adultery, but we got five session folk. So, <laughs> adultery. We'll get to the adultery. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. The adultery's coming. <laughs> Speaking of adultery, <laughs> is the Princess Daria married, widowed? What What's the story here? Um. Yeah, I think she's married. Oh boy. My take was that I have like a like a dithering kind of absentee father That's, who yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that too. Like easily manipulated, just kind of very studious, is never really paying attention. Like I could probably hook up with a guy in the next room and he would not notice. I like him already. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um so I think out on a balcony, uh Daria and Constantine meet. And uh, he immediately just opens up his cigarette case and offers you a cigarette. Uh, she takes it, obviously. I have to say, Dolly, Petersburg is almost bearable, knowing that you're back. Well, Connie, that is good to hear. I have to say... Uh, Nice was quite lonely without you this year. Surely you didn't come back to Petersburg just for me. Heavens no. I confess I ran into one or two slight difficulties in Paris, you know. It's so expensive. Connie, have you been gambling? Gambling is a game of skill played between equal opponents. She like leans in so you can light her cigarette and says, not when you play it. That is unfortunately the problem. It's not gambling when it seems to be a sure thing for the other person to win. I am having an extraordinary string of bad luck. Well, that is or quite least, I was. We could just fade to black right there and I'd be very happy unless you have oh, No, no, no. I am. <laughs> <laughs> Dolly, I think our children are making fools of themselves again. Whatever for? Whatever about? Valia wouldn't. Why is your son not married yet? Oh, you know how it is. He's just, he has a very clear idea of what he wants. And apparently that woman doesn't exist. But I'm just throwing everything I can at him and hopefully I'll get something settled eventually. Either he'll give in because he finds someone he really likes or he'll give in to shut me up. Either way works for me. Dolly, take it from a father who has failed more than he has succeeded. You do not want the attachment of scandal, nor do you wish. I've made many mistakes with Tamara. I regret almost all of them. I don't want to see you and Bali end up that way. And yes, it will sound mercenary, but what about what about my sister, Anna Sergeyevna? She's a delightful girl. She is quiet. She will be a good wife to him. Well, I think that's a wonderful idea, darling. But if you can find a way to introduce them so that he won't immediately hate her, I'm going to hand it off to you. I may not be the best ambassador for this mission, Dolly. <laughs> Well, I'm not either. Everything I try to give the boy, he despises. I mean, unless it's a vacation, in which case he takes to it like a fish to water. And I think that's mostly to get away from me, so. Mm -hmm. 
What about Alexander Fyodorovna? She actually likes him quite a bit. Are you suggesting that we have them introduce? I, I don't know what to do, Dolly. It's bad enough that I am facing failure at my age. I have a daughter who despises me, a sister I cannot care for. I am in a, well, whatever it is our friendship is with a married woman of respectable character. I am quite respectable, aren't I? Yes, and the novel is difficult. It's not so easy to just switch the genders of characters and yet have the tragic love story remain. I'm working on it. Connie, my darling, I wish you wouldn't speak of yourself so. And listen, if you want Tamara to come around to your way of thinking, I suggest you try speaking to her like she is an equal. That's all she wants from you. I know it goes against your idea of how a man talks to his daughter, but really, she's an intelligent young woman. Honestly, Dolly, how can I call myself her equal? What am I? She married well. She married back into the ranks of nobility. I mean, my family has a name and we had a title long ago, but till my grandmother married that Frenchman, I'm sure it was worth it. One would hope. I mean, he was French. He was French. Oh, Dolly, what am I going to do? I will talk to the Countess and see about her introducing your sister. Because certainly it can't come from me if we want the match to work. And you, you, I would offer some space in which to work, the summer house, if you're interested. But what will your husband say? And they immediately cracks up. <laughs> what will he say indeed? I don't think he even knows all the properties we own. Well, I, uh, I would, I would love to do that, Dolly. Well, then let's set your mind at ease, get yourself a drink, and I'll meet you in the library in 20 minutes. Is that what we're calling it now? I mean, that's what I've been calling it. Makes it sound like I'm as studious as my husband. Mm. There we can fade to black. <laughs> <laughs> Man, Dolly's trashy. I like her. I think we accidentally swapped the description of, of Daria and, and I think Julia. Too. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> but you know what? It's so much better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think she is overbearing. It still works. Yeah. <laughs> overbearing and eccentric. <laughs> and actually it makes sense that the milk toast husband is the one that's super pious. Yeah. Yeah. All right, folks. Uh, unless people have something urgent to... Uh, add to the night story i think we can end it there yeah good yeah all right um well this was absolutely wonderful and uh this was great we're gonna keep doing this for a while and uh you know i'm gonna stop the recording in a second and then if we want to talk we can talk on here uh and uh anyway uh for everybody else watching at home thank you for joining uh all three of you <laughs> and uh <laughs> Do Svidania, and I'll see you all soon.